when I turned 18 years old, I was just kind of standing there on my own. So I had to start rebuilding myself and rebuilding my life. And that brings us to Dancing with the Stars. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Let's all go dance for the American public with a smiling face as if nothing is wrong. Season nine in 2009. So this is a national TV show. Could be positive exposure for Aaron. Sure. He was partnered with dancing pro Karina Smirnoff. Oh. It's always weird when like a Russian person has Smirnoff as the last yeah, name. The, right. Of the Smirnoff fortune. Yeah, like if I was Alejandro Pabst, Blue Ribbon yeah, or something. Right. <laughs> yeah, I never realized Smirnoff was a uh, last name. I yeah. Know. Despite his best effort, Aaron was eliminated in fifth place. Well, that's not bad. Outlasting Melissa Joan Hart, Macy Gray, and Tom DeLay. There you go. Who was Wait, Tom DeLay, the house speaker? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Arrested? Former House Majority <laughs> Leader who was indicted for money laundering. Yo. Oh, when did America, like, collapse? Yeah. This is America, wow. this cast. Yeah. Wow. Cash is just flying Tom out of his DeLay. pockets while he's moving around. <laughs> Y'all want, want to see a mugshot? Tom DeLay's mugshot is the best. Oh, let's see it. Oh, my God. He, he, he's, like, getting his senior picture taken. He's, like, strangely happy. Oh, yeah, he's super happy. <laughs> Has a little smile on. And this is the first one, the one with the bow tie. Or the one, I'm rather, with just the basic tie. Oh, That's yeah. him. He's smiling like a politician. <laughs> yeah. I love the camera. I don't know what it is. <laughs> In 2011, Aaron completed a month of rehab at the Betty Ford Clinic Good. to treat what he called emotional and spiritual issues. Absolutely. Afterwards... He starred in the off-Broadway production of The Fantastics. Okay, cool. So he's kind of getting back in there? Yeah. And he began touring again as a solo artist and became a staple on reality TV with appearances on such shows as Celebrity Ghost Stories. Cool. And Celebrity Cook-Off. Oh. But not Celebrity Rehab. I mean, honestly, that show is the worst. That is not the way rehab should go. When I did Passages of Ventura, which I pointed <laughs> out before. It's not fucking Malibu. <laughs> Kissel, don't go to Malibu. Stay out of Malibu, Kissel. Yeah, it's the uh, blue collar passages over there. But man, the amount of intense stuff, the tears, you know, the conversations, you cannot do that on camera. You don't want it's it's the most intimate, you know, you're with strangers, mm -hmm. but like, man, that's a horror celebrity rehab, those producers, there's a special place for folks that made that thing. Yeah, discussing all your deepest traumas for the world to see that and is... to make fun of to be honest yeah exactly I mean, no one got better i think Vern troyer just pissed his chair yep. and you know i mean it's just such trash yeah there weren't a lot of excuses you could make watching it that it's informational or beneficial Definitely for anybody not. yeah <laughs> dr drew argued that he was getting people help that otherwise wouldn't have gotten help so to pay them to be on tv was the way you could help these people i mean mm -hmm. i've met dr drew and in that world i suppose it makes some sense the new york post reported that he was allegedly joining the cast back in 2008 shortly after he was busted with pot during a traffic stop in texas so it was reported that he was joining at one point but it didn't end up happening okay aaron was also featured on oprah's where are they now that's always where you want to be career-wise, right? Brandy from our last episode was on that as well. But she got the big interview with Oprah. Yeah. Aaron right. was just featured. Oh, so they didn't even interview him? No. They were just like, oh, he's still alive? Yeah. Oh, there wow. Go. Yeah, might as well just have the celebrity death clock going to the corner. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. God. In 2013, Aaron filed for bankruptcy after owing millions in taxes mm. from his superstar tween days. The debt was quickly settled after that. But how does he owe taxes when his mom stole it from him? If you, I know the money's coming into you, but he must have had her, her had like I, a power of attorney or something. I'm sure it's his LLC. Yeah. He's the business. Ugh. Mm -hmm. So he's responsible. Yeah. That's so brutal. It's awful. So sickening. Yeah. And by that Between point. Lou Pearlman, his mother, and the federal government stealing his money. They're all crooks. I wonder why he got bankrupt. Yeah. You know what? I think I changed my mind. Lou Pearlman kind of sounds like a bad guy. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He came <laughs> around. Alejandro comes around. Thank you. That's the point of the show is to learn, bro. We grow. <laughs> 
And by this point, Aaron's mom, Jane, is in no condition to help him take care of that debt because it's not like her hot dog stand lit the world on fire. Yeah. Right. So she's not making I mean, any money anymore. The only thing that makes me like her is that she has a hot dog. Yeah. Like, that's the only thing. That's the only redeeming quality thus far. <laughs> Love me. It's just a, a glory dog. hole. <laughs> what? Oh, boy. I didn't yeah. a hot dog at all. <laughs> <laughs> nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Wait, what are we on Nickelodeon right now? Yeah. Here we go. Pickle boy. Um, 2017. It would prove to be a fateful turning point for Aaron. In May, his dad, Robert, suddenly died of a heart attack oh. at age 65, leaving his family heartbroken. So he never really fought with his dad that much. Okay. It was mainly his mom. Gotcha. Even though there's dysfunctionality, he loved he loved both his parents. Of course. Just had that so complex. drama with the mom. So this was devastating to Aaron when his dad died. Yeah, he's just getting hit left and right, man. He's going to be like Jake Paul when he goes against Mike Tyson. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> then in July, Aaron was arrested for driving under the influence and possession of marijuana. He pleaded no contest to reckless driving and was put on probation. Okay. In his mugshot, which was released publicly, like Tom DeLay's, yeah. he looked like he was an emaciated drug addict. Super thin, with a shaved side of his head, right. just one side, and neck tattoos. I mean, honestly, it's like, uh, again, the faces of meth. It's a mm -hmm. billboard right there. You can see the pain in his eyes, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's scary, and it scared everybody that saw it, so fans were worried. And right. to calm them down, he appeared on Entertainment Tonight again. And let's take a look at that interview. I have a hiatal hernia. I have a stress condition. It's an eating disorder. How, how would you feel every, every, every two seconds seeing a tweet, you have AIDS, go die. Oh, look at this meth head. Oh, meth kills. Crack kills. I would never say that. Look at my teeth. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. Look at my teeth. Yeah. Look at my face. I'm not a meth head. I've never touched it in my life. It's body shaming. It is the toughest thing to deal with. You know, so he was the victim of the 90s predatory culture, and then he also had the social media coming towards the end. Mm. He got hit all around. Yeah. Aaron told Us Weekly in December 2017, quote, I thought I would be dead by 30. Even when I was 13, 14, I thought, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Life was pretty tough. I dealt with a lot of trauma, a lot of loss, a lot of loneliness. I just felt like I needed to get away. I just feel like he should have been a marine biologist. Yeah. You know, that's, I mean, we all feel that way. I mean, and also that's not uncommon. Like Chris Farley was my idol. I figured I'd die at 33. That was like 33, mm -hmm. you know, that's Belushi, that's Farley. And you know, like what, John Candy was like 44, 43, something like that. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of kids have that ideation because when you're 13, you think 30 is old and yeah. you get to 30 and you're like, I think my brain is almost starting to turn on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so true. At 18, it feels decades away right like 30 40 and yeah it is but <laughs> but it feels like a lifetime and that you you're like i'm not gonna live that long right. yeah and he had just turned 30 that okay. that year he went on to say in that same interview that he wasn't ashamed to speak about his issues and talked about having post-traumatic stress disorder right. he talked about his dad and sister dying and the divorce and that everything just spiraled out of control and now his fame was based on his troubles right it was not music it was not performing mm -hmm. the well of trauma or trauma right. porn yep. that's what it became about People waiting around for him to die. But also that performative side of him hamming it up, too. Right. Mm. Like in that E.T. interview, when he's showing her the teeth. Yeah. He was also erratic on social media, and he loved engaging with trolls. Right. So he did a whole media tour, infamously pleading for help on the show The Doctors, citing such issues as substance abuse, family drama, and mental health. And so here's a clip from his first appearance on The Doctors. Mm. God bless you because the stress you're under, but then on top of that, everything's out there. After the DUI, I know that hurts you. 
because again, alleged more public. DUI. Alleged DUI. Alleged <laughs> DUI. But the then one of the things I also noticed when you met with Dr. Jorge, you opened up and expressed your concerns that you're worried you have HIV. Absolutely. I know you recently came out as bisexual. Yes. Is that one of the other reasons that's had you concerned? Because you admit no. on the tape piece that you, you say, I haven't always been safe sexually. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, and that's, that's a fact. I haven't always been safe sexually, and I have no qualms in saying that. You've acknowledged that prescription medications, but Xanax, Clonopin, you said you take opiates for surgeries that you've had in the past. Do you ever worry that you could ever overdose? I mean, there's always that worry, but there's also the fact that I had to kiss my sister goodbye in the coffin. I know that there is no happy ending to any of those medications. Proud of you for realizing that. It's not even a realization, it's a fact. It's a medical fact. And, and usually the doctor has to say that. Before, before we take a break, Aaron, I, I wanna ask you one thing real quickly. What's your greatest fear? My greatest fear? I don't even know how to answer that question. <laughs> not being able to live as long as I can. That's my wow. greatest fear. And what fantastic advice from the doctor. <laughs> God, yeah, you talk about it. They just want him to just admit to everything. Yeah. Ever, where's the help? Yeah. You know, there's a show in, uh, in the UK, and if you ever get out there, you got it's something about the doctors, right? But it's totally different. I turned on the TV one time, I think I was in Scotland, just an asshole, just a butthole right there on the screen. <laughs> and they were like, this guy's got, uh, you know, some kind of polyp or something in his butthole. But they do like real surgeries and like real stuff. It's totally different than oh, whatever wow. that pop bullshit is. Wow. It is uh, very unique. Yeah, this yeah, one, they're like, oh, so you're bisexual, huh? <laughs> Tell me about that. Is that why you have AIDS? <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, you have HIV? Yeah, I hear you like to blow dudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. That, thank you, doctor. Yeah, you're nervous about HIV. It's like that you can find out in a clinic in 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Like, why is he worried that he has it? Yeah. But this just became if he. But at the same time, he wasn't gonna get on those shows unless he did that. That's mm. what I'm saying. I don't think he really thought he had it. I mean, who knows? Or he did. Yeah. In 2017, that same year, like I said, it was a big year, A.J. McLean from the Bad oh, Street yeah. Boys helped him get into a treatment center in Malibu. Damn. So he is. I've fucking been there, man. <laughs> I got to get to Malibu. So he's better than you. Oh, yeah, of course he is. <laughs> Working class. I'm a son of a truck driver. Yeah. <laughs> when A.J. called to check in two weeks later, they told him that Aaron had already checked out. Mm. It was one of four times that he went to rehab. And in the Hulu special that's called Aaron Carter, the Prince, of, the Little Prince of Pop, uh -huh. taken from the mom's book, remember? Right, right. And that was his nickname, actually, bestowed on him by Michael Jackson. Okay. Because they, they became friendly. Oh, boy. So in this Hulu special, AJ said Aaron grew up with a distorted perception of reality thinking he could get anything he wanted at any time. And in this clip, they asked him to sum up Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter's life story in one sentence. A beautiful tragedy. Jesus, AJ. Because he did have a beautiful life when things were good. Beautiful tragedy. I don't know if he did have a beautiful life. Yeah. Also, is it delusional when it's true? He got away with everything because he's paying the bills. So it's like, it's his life. But what annoys me the most about that clip is it's not even a sentence. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, you wanted a full sentence. Beautiful tragedy. <laughs> uh, he was a, a. a beautiful tragedy. Yeah. yeah. Is A a word? Mm. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> it's a great word. Hell of a <laughs> And then in 2018, Aaron released a new album. Hey, all right. He's back on top. He'd been working. Well, you know, up to you to decide. <laughs> he had been working on new music for over a decade and had been slowly putting it out there starting in 2015. So this was a new sound, obviously. it's not He's not singing about beating Shaq anymore. Right, right. It's more personal. So yeah, it culminated with an EP in 2017, then a full album called Love in 2018. Mm. It was a solid effort, but failed to reignite his music career to the heights of his early days. 
So he's just going up against himself, and that's unfair. Right. So yeah. to the public, it's like, dude, you're not, you can't even get on the charts like when you were 12. It's yeah. like, well, yeah, no one really can anymore. How yeah. much did it sell? Because if it sold like 500,000, any other act, uh, act would be like, that's great. But I guess if you had 3 million when you were 10. Yeah. I don't think it even did that. Okay. Good, but still, it did fine on the internet, sure. like YouTube and whatnot. But unfortunately, his tabloid persona was taking over his pop star persona. Got you. All music who trashed him before, remember that uh, child's music critique? Yes. Fucking guy. Uh, they gave him three and a half stars for all music. Okay. But the Knoxville News Sentinel gave him two stars. <laughs> Whoa, you don't pass the <laughs> Knoxville smell test. Nope. What an asshole. Like, <laughs> this poor kid has been through hell, and he finally gives you some music by yeah. the grace of God. And then it's like, you suck. No, nah, yeah. this, this, is, this is Knoxville Gazette. It's one of the bigger papers here in Knoxville. <laughs> Chuck Campbell from the daily newspaper Knoxville News Sentinel gave the album two out of five stars and described it as, quote, a nondescript exercise in modern formula. Shallow pop EDM songs about relationships. Thank and, you. Uh, he really did not like that. Well, there you go. <laughs> you know what Corey Feldman would say? Doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> in 2019, Aaron revealed he had gone to rehab for huffing. Okay. Also that he had been diagnosed with schizophrenia, oh. bipolar disorder, manic depression, and anxiety. Dude, this is like me when I go on WebMD. He got <laughs> he got everything. <laughs> I got it all. Aaron appeared on the doctors again. Dang, so they didn't help him the first time, huh? But this time with his mom, Jane, by his side. Oh, that would oh, be good. Boy. Their relationship was as destructive as ever. They were basically enabling each other's addictions, it appeared. Hers was alcohol. And here's a clip from that. Tell us a little bit about what your life is like now. Oh. Just get into it, Mom. Just, just, just go. This is a conversation. This isn't an interview. Uh, it's totally normal, life. yeah. Um, Your national tell, TV in front of <clears throat> I get up in the morning. I get up, like, real early, like... Tell them the truth. Four or five o'clock, because I've always been an early riser. Mm -hmm. And, uh... First thing I want to do is is have a drink. Mm -hmm. and I drink vodka with Kool Aid, <laughs> and so you don't really taste the vodka. Mm -hmm. And good uh, tip. it gets my motor running. I feel like, oh, okay, I feel really good, yeah. getting some stuff done around the house. And then I know that um, I have to eat something by like noon. So then I eat. So I go I to my hot dog stand. Take a nap, <laughs> and then I get up. Sober and, up. Yeah, and it's just sober up. And then I get up and I go to work, and I'm a server. In a restaurant. Mm -hmm. She's a server at a restaurant. Dun, dun, dun. After giving up her life for her dreams uh, for me and my brother. I'm not ashamed of it. I There's am. No oh. Oh, damn. Wow. Okay. Well, there you go. There it is. Jeez. Uh, things are fine. <laughs> you know, yeah. the old the old vodka Kool-Aid breakfast there. <laughs> Dang, that brings me back to high school. Yeah, her lips were red. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, it's also good for makeup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The old prison <laughs> lipstick. <laughs> to any servers listening to this episode, we do not feel the same way Hell about no. your... Oh, thank you for what you do. You all deserve gold medals, man. I mean, being a server in today's world where everyone's so entitled, you get yelled at all the time. Keep your head up. Yep. What would Denny's be without servers? Absolutely. It would just trash. be a table. <laughs> it would just be a table with no moon, moons over my hammy. Come nope. by. <laughs> No grand slam. Dang. I always prefer the bunt. Yeah. <laughs> just one wet, just one wet biscuit they give you. In September 2019, brother Nick, remember Nick? Of course. <laughs> yes. How can we forget? Yes. <laughs> From BSB. Yes, we do. Filed a restraining order against Aaron oh. after he made alleged disturbing confessions about Nick's wife, Lauren. All right. So he's just popping off on social media. Yeah. Quote, in light of Aaron's increasingly alarming behavior and his recent confessions that he harbors thoughts and intentions of killing my pregnant wife and unborn child, we were left with no choice but to take every measure possible to protect ourselves and our family, Nick tweeted at the time. Okay. And he also tweeted on behalf of his sister, Angel, and went on to say that 
They both love their brother and hope that he gets the proper treatment he needs before any harm comes to himself or anyone else. Dot, dot, dot. Please don't gut my wife. Yeah. Yeah, so Jesus. that really reached fever pitch there, that their relationship. It's soured. Yeah, usually when you threaten somebody's pregnant wife with murder <laughs> of both the unborn child and the wife, things aren't going well that Thanksgiving. Yeah. No. <laughs> Aaron denied his brother's allegations, claiming in his own social media message that he had not been in touch with his sibling for four years. Wow. So this is getting crazy. It's Aaron against the world. Right. Also in 2019, Aaron fell for a girl named Melanie Martin on social media. So he's glued to social media. Right. He's getting everything. From that, that might be his worst addiction. Hmm. She commented on a post about his dogs, saying she wished she could cuddle with them. Then he answered her back saying she could. <laughs> oh, hey, all right. Look at that. <laughs> well, that was easy. Melanie soon became his fiance. Oh, my. And now let's talk about a couple other ways Aaron was trying to put himself out there and make money and possibly carve out a new career. In March 2020, he launched an OnlyFans. Wow. He did. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know any of this, to be honest. <laughs> Charging between $50 to $125 to access single photos of himself. Now, what are we talking about here? What kind of photos are you talking here? Nudes. Oh. Is there any non-nude photo on OnlyFans? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, and if you That's, throw That explains in... why I'm not doing well. I got one, but it's just me cooking chili. <laughs> Take your pants off. You might have something there. Hey. Oh, I don't think about that. I'll be paying them money. Be, I lost $100,000 a month on OnlyFans. People are looking at my, my balls. Bad investment. Right, right. Oh, and if you throw in another 50 bucks, he'll rate a photo of you. Oh, oh that's what I want. <laughs> And the gay site Queer Tea reviewed his OnlyFans, and they were nonplussed. Wow. They were not impressed, huh? No. You can't please them all. Reviews he are in it. many reviewers, to be honest. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. We're the only ones that like him. Yeah. I'm just, the whole thing is just sad. Oh, they're even challenging that, that he's bisexual. What? They said, as we reported yesterday, the, quote, bisexual, end quote, New quote, rapper, end quote. Oh, they're questioning everything. <laughs> they're shitting all over this guy. Wow. Damn. So what, he was queer baiting or something? I guess. That's what they think. Hmm. I mean, he's done a lot of drugs. I guarantee you he's bisexual. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for one reason or another. Yeah. Right. In June 2021, you remember this? There was a boxing match versus Lamar Odom. I totally forgot about Dude, that. Dude, I totally forgot. <laughs> Lamar, he's got his own things going on, too. Yeah. Right? And in their headline, Sports Illustrated wrote, Celebrity Boxing Jumps the Shark with Lamar Odom, Aaron Carter Bout. Yeah, as opposed to when it was Horshack and Screech. <laughs> yeah. the fuck? I remember when this was a classy business. Yeah, what the fuck are you talking? It's really jumped a shark now. Yeah, yeah when talking it was about. Paula Jones and Tanya Hardy. Yeah, yeah. Now that's class. It's the good old days. Yeah, catered by Paula Dean. Yeah. And Sports Illustrated went on to call it an attention grab. <gasps> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no way. That TV show was an attention grab? Yeah. <laughs> what a shocker. <laughs> My God. Oh, oh, oh. He's down. Okay. He's down. Aaron's got Aaron's quick. No boss. Aaron's quick. No boss. Aaron Carter, come on. I think he deserves a round of applause, man. 